Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Mizano World Circuit. Marco Simoncelli, and welcome to another weekend in the 2022 Clio Cup. This time round, it is Clio Cup Italia that is featuring on our screens. No Clio Cup France, Spain, or Italy, or even Europe or Central Europe to be seen here. We have a wonderful list of 25 drivers taking to the circuit right now in absolutely sweltering conditions. It's been a very, very lovely 27 degrees pretty much all day here at Mizano, and as you can see from the heat haze rising from the cars and the circuit there, it is not going to change. It's been a wonderful, wonderful start to the weekend so far. My name, of course, is Chaz Draycott, and I'll be bringing you all of this weekend's action and really looking forward to seeing what we can get up to this time around. Last year, it was a hell of a race weekend. Gabriel Torelli lines up on the front row of the grid. It's his second Clio Cup Italia pole of the season. He lines up alongside many-time champion Nicola Milan. Felice Gelmini and Giacomo Trebi make a very exciting row two, with Gian Alberto Coldani and Quinto Stefano, the head of the gentleman drivers, on row three. Alessandro Alcidi and Lorenzo Nicoli are on row four, with William Mazzetti and Cosimo Papi rounding out your top ten. Jacopo Chimenez and Diego Casara make up row six, ahead of Paolo Felisa and Alessio Alcidi on row seven. Christian Ricciarini is right amongst it with the Challengers Cup drivers alongside Sandro Subek on row eight. And then we have an all-gentleman drivers, row nine, Luciano Gioia and Due in 18th position. Daniele Pasquale, another gentleman driver, lines up on row 10 with Damiano Pacchetti, who's actually had a sixth-place grid penalty due to his incident at Imola in race two. Francesco Cosentino is 21st alongside Sandro Coutini. Then we have Pietro Blumetti alongside Massimiliano Ciocca in 24th and on the back row of the grid is the press league by oregon team car the number triple three machine of paolo tonion he'll be taking to the circuit for the first race and his teammate effectively the second driver of the weekend will be dario pinicca in the second race as you see there the track is 49 degrees celsius it is very very hot out there on the circuit 72 degrees sorry 72 percent humidity and it makes me more and more grateful that we have fantastic air conditioning in these commentary boxes here at Misano. As mentioned, it's Clio Cup Italy that features this weekend. There's a few drivers that are not in the group, essentially. Uh, Alessio, sorry, Alessandro Alcidi, Nicola Milan, two of them. Also, the Press League car does not feature in Clio Cup Italy either. I spoke to Nicola Milan this morning, actually, and he said this is like a holiday to him. The usual big hitters are not here. We don't have GPA racing out on track this weekend, so no David Puget, no Alex Albui. We don't have Mark Guillo or any of the other guys like Anthony Girardo from the Milan competition team. Even the my good friends at Unique Racing, the Polish team of Jerzy Spinkovic, they're not here this weekend either. It is simply all the Italian cars. It's going to be fantastic entertainment as ever. Felice Gelmini leads Clio Cup Italy at the moment. The TCR Europe driver really showing how good he is with maximum points. Two wins from two at Imola. He took a pole position there as well. There's Daniele Pasquale getting plenty of temperature into those front tyres, making sure that he spins them up as much as possible. And that is very, very important in these cars because you have the front wheels doing all of the work over the course of a race. 25 cars lining up on the grid right now for you, and the action is just about to get underway. If you've not watched Clio Cup racing before, then trust me, you are going to enjoy this. We always have a good laugh here, and especially at Mizano as well. Now, for anyone that watches often, that yellow car in the middle of the field, no, that's not Mark Gio. That is Sandro Subek the Austrian driver in car 223. The lights are coming on though at Misano and the first race of the weekend in Clio Cup 2022 is underway. There's tyre smoke and wheel spin everywhere and Gabriel Torelli works very hard to move over to the right-hand side to defend straight away from Nicola Milan. Can't do it though, can he carry the pace around the outside? Looks like he's gonna do it, but he runs a little bit wide. Milan goes in front by turn two, fantastic stuff from the 13, yes, 13 time champion. And down the inside, Gelmini throws his car in there as well. Now let's not forget, Gelmini and Torelli are fighting together for the lead in Clio Cup Italy. Right behind them as well is Giacomo Trevi, the head of the Challengers Cup drivers. That's William Mazzetti there in the 103 car, getting really stuck in. Everybody seems to have made it through nice and tidy. Mazzetti across the inside a little bit there, just having a bit of a moment as well, I think, was that potentially 
the 107 of Richie Arini just getting a bit out of shape. Now Trebi's having to defend here because right behind him is Alessandro Alcidi in the number 70 car. Quinto Stefan has dropped a few places. The number 69 machine, one of three Castrol branded cars. Torelli there getting into the side of Gelmini. Felice defending very hard indeed. Gabriel maybe lets off the brakes a little bit there as if to say, go on son, get round. Scary, scary moment there by those guys. Contact on the way up is not what you want, especially up there towards turns nine and 10. But look at that, the front Nicola Milan starting to break away here. Side by side behind them though, Alessandro Alcidi. He's not in the Challengers Cup or the Gentleman Drivers Cup or anything. And he's just getting amongst it here, trying to put Trebi out wide and he is out wide. But he manages to hold the position. Lorenzo Nicoli sneaking in there as well. He's making a strong early effort. Now that is Quinto Stefano there. Having a bit of a battle with one of the Scuderia Costa Ovest cars. I'm pretty sure that was the number six of Papi. Through the final corner they go. End of lap one, and it seems everybody's made it around nice and cleanly. Nicola Milan leads, then it's Felice Gelmini, Gabriel Torelli, Giacomo Trebi, Alessio Alcini, Lorenzo Nicoli, Gian Alberto Coldani, then it's Cosimo Papi, Quinto Stefano, and William Mazzetti there in the white and neon yellow car. Rounds out your top ten. Nicola Milan literally did say this was a holiday to him, as I've mentioned. And he's going to be treating it as such if he can get an overall race win out of this. It doesn't go towards any of his championship point tallies or any sort of campaign that he's got going on this season. But there they go. Now, I've just been told, actually, Alessandro Alcidi has become a part of the Clio Cup Italia group, so he is fighting for the win in that class, essentially. Or the group, I should say. That's the right word for it. We have all the groups and then classes within those groups. There's a lot to keep your eye on in Clio Cup Europe. And there's two cars to keep your eye on as well. The SA Corsa cars, the dark red machines of Jacopo Jimenez and Luciano Gioia. Big lock up there by LCD. But look at these three. Gelmini having to hold on ahead of Gabriel Torelli. And then Giacomo Trevi just closing in behind the three of them as well. Somewhere in the field, a little bit further back, we have Christian Ricciarini. He's third in Clio Cup Italy at the moment in the 107 car, leading the Challengers Cup, but he's also a double champion of Clio Cup Italy, 2009 and 2016. Into the final couple of corners again, lockups from those right rear wheels, just trying to break away. They lift up off the ground ever so gently as they get into the final parts of this circuit. And again, Nicola Milan, he's just going to be keeping his eyes on whatever's going on around him at the moment. He's not going to be pushing himself too hard. You can bet your bottom dollar that he's going to want to get involved in all of this. At the end of the day, he's out here in the searing heat of Italy, keeping his racecraft sharp, not like he needs to. But now Felice Gelmini, who certainly is a driver to keep you sharp, is right behind him. As you saw at the bottom of your screen there, Giacomo Trebi does the fastest lap of the race, a 154.4. It's a very long lap here at Misano. 16 corners around this tight and twisty track. As oh, Nicola Milan running a little bit wide there. Doesn't quite get it right through turns four and five. And now as they go down towards what is apparently turn eight, Gelmini puts his car down the inside. Look at Nicola Milan's car dancing around on the brakes. Moving one way, then the other. They all go very far out wide. Collectively getting one big track limits warning. Now, Nicola Milan leads Clio Cup Europe at the moment with 166 points. He's got six podium finishes overall this season, a race win to his name and a pole. This is some shenanigans from further down. Wow, scary moment there by the number 45. That's Paolo Felisa. Just locking up on the way into turn four. I'm not quite sure if he caught the back of the car in front of him there. That would have been a very, very scary moment, no matter what. I think the car in front of him was Luciano Gioia, who's now down in 19th place. But what was a top quartet has now become a top trio as Gabriel Torelli now piles the pressure on Gelmini, who piles the pressure on Nicola Milan. Nicola going very wide out of the right-hander there at turn 14. Then it's the quick left-hander at turn 15. And then they straighten them up, get away from those sausage curbs, and then through turn 16 as quickly as possible. Don't let the car run too far out wide, because again, 
Sausage curbs galore out there. Now look at Torelli. Tucking in the slipstream of Felice Gelmini. Faro racing car chasing PMA motorsport car. I love the teal and black livery on the PMA cars. They are phenomenal looking machines. Everyone will probably recognize Felice Gelmini's car after his pretty much viral moment down at Aqua Minerale at Imola a couple of weeks ago where he saved the mother of all slides in the slippery conditions. He certainly shone a fantastic light on Clio Cup because of his antics. And onto the back straight we go once more. I've been made aware as well that the guys from Unique Racing, the Polish team, are actually watching back at home. So, hi guys, hope you're enjoying the race so far. Shame not to see you out here in the sunshine, but you've had enough of it so far this year. As, wow, speak about going out wide, track limits. Lorenzo Nicoli goes flying off to the left-hand side there. He's in seventh position at the moment, trying to chase down Gian Alberto Coldani. Here they are, Cosimo Papi right behind him in the, well, blue and blue machine, light blue, dark blue. And then right behind them, Quinto Stefano. Now you can see on the timing tower on the left-hand side, the red and blue marks. The red drivers are the Challengers Cup drivers. They're the younger guys in the pack with less experience, less achievements to their names. And then the blue little strikes next to the name mean that they're a gentleman driver. These are usually the older drivers in the field. Quinto Stefano very far out in front of the rest of them as Cosimo Papi down the inside of Nicoli, very side by side, very close. Cosimo gets in front. Lorenzo says, not on your life. I want that back, please. Lorenzo had a bit of a tough race weekend here last year, actually. Got many black flags and many warnings, but he's learned his lesson, I'm sure. But he's a very feisty racer, and no matter what, he's so excited to have on our screens. They all scream their way down the start, finish straight. 200 horsepower, these little Clios, and they weigh about as much as my left arm, so they certainly dance. Lorenzo getting slightly up on two wheels there for a moment. The sausage curbs really can launch these Clios into orbit. We've had them roll over before at Imola, and look at this, Quinto Stefano puts the pressure on. Lorenzo goes one way, then the other. The back end steps out slightly. Is that going to affect him? Right rear wheel comes off the ground. Quinto works on getting the run, but he needs to be careful here because he might get ganged up on by the Progetto E20 motorsport cars because he's got Nicoli's teammate, William Mazzetti, right behind him. Everybody just filtering their way through nice and tidy, nice and clean. That's what's important in these Clio Cup races. They can be quite fierce sometimes. You have to survive the race to be in with a chance of winning at least. But Nicola Milan starting to open up a bit of a lead now. It was three tenths of a second last time they crossed any of the timing beams, but I'd argue that that has got even bigger now. He's then got six tenths back to Gabriel Torelli. Giacomo Trebi leads the Challengers Cup at the moment. And it's Coldani and Papi, sixth and seventh respectively. Quinto Stefano leading gentleman drivers in ninth. Due and Diego Casara are second and third in that class, but they are 16th and 17th respectively. Now, something tells me here that Gabriel Torelli is getting a little bit impatient sat behind Felice Del Gelmini. And he realizes that they're losing Milan in front and they're not benefiting from the slipstream. Now, what they really need to do is try and work together here, but if Torelli starts to have a go, then it's not going to work for them going forward. Back to Papi and Nicoli. And there at the back of the field is the triple three machine. That is, of course, Tonyon in the media, the press league car by Oregon team. Two drivers sharing that car this weekend. Now, Gelmini seems to have really quickly caught up to the back of Nicola Milan once again. Gelmini has this burst of pace that we see from him every so often. When he puts his mind to it and cracks on in these cars, he's, he's scary fast. Last season at the Red Bull Ring, I think he went fastest in qualifying by nearly three quarters of a second, bearing in mind how much of a slipstream dependent circuit that is. Gabriel Torelli was faster than Nicola Milan by six tenths of a second in qualifying here as well. So some of these guys have insane pace. Nicola Milan, number one Castrol branded machine at the front there that you see. He's a 13-time Clio Cup champion across the different series. 
He's won Clio Cup Europe overall twice. He's won Clio Cup Spain four times, and he's been Clio Cup France champion seven times. He's got an incredible resume behind him. His first one came in 2009, where he did three on the trot. Then he won one in 2014, and then he's dotted them about since then, 2018, 2020, and 2021, as hopping and skipping their way into turns 13 and 14. Go Felice, Gelmini, and Gabriel Torelli. Now Nicolas Milan again runs wide through there. He just can't quite get it tucked in like Gelmini and Torelli can. But maybe that balances out with how much speed he carries on the way in. We'll have to see. Keep our eye on that on the following lap. Across the line they go. Milan moves to the right-hand side, but that means Gelmini's going to be on the outside. And that's going to be the inside for the second part of the chicane. We've seen a lot of moves get completed like this. Gelmini squeezes his way around the outside. Lovely stuff. Gets it tucked in on the curve, and he's in front, and he's done it. He's done the job now. He needs to be careful for a cutback. Really keeps it tight through turn three. Gabriel Torelli seen that, and he thinks, well, I want a piece of this now. Puts his nose down the inside, thinks against it. Dives to the left. Keeps Milan on his inside. Goes for some sort of cutback through turns four and five. Uses all of the circuit and some on the right-hand side to make sure he doesn't make contact with Nicolas Milan. But look behind them now. Suddenly, Giacomo Trebi leading the Challengers' Cup has come into this. And Alessandro Sa uh, Alcidi, sorry, he's not too far away either. As Milan looks down the inside of Gelmini, closes the door, gives him a little bit of a bump through turn eight. That's going to slow both of them down and give Gabriel Torelli a bit of a run up the hill now, surely. Trebi's going to be watching all of this unfold, thinking, what, what on earth? <laughs> These guys all attacking each other and defending from each other at certain parts of the circuit. This is true Clio racing, and Nicola Milan says, I'll show you true Clio racing. Gets up alongside Gelmini, kisses the wing mirror and says, go on, go on, have that Castrol logo. Here you go. They dare each other all the way down to turn 13, and look at that down the inside. Gabriel Torelli says, thanks, lads, I'll have a piece of that as well. Three wide through turn 14. Gelmini's on the outside, he's getting hung out to dry. Milan uses his wise head, thinks better of it. It's Torelli and Gelmini both again showing us the Italian flamboyance. Fantastic drifting. Unbelievably, they both make the corner. Torelli loses out, though. Trebi gets into this. Gelmini and Milan make contact, then Gelmini and Trebi make contact. Torelli looks down the inside. Trebi thinks, no, thank you, but somehow still finds his way around the outside of Torelli. Torelli gets in front, though, at turn 16, and then, well, it's nearly on the beach. <laughs> wow. Torelli ends up in Rimini, has to get back into Misano. Now he's getting a push from Alcidi as well. He's still back down the inside of Giacomo. Trebi doesn't make contact. Well, I said that this is true Clio racing, and it really is. Look at them all. Epic stuff. The fact that they could all do that, get so close to each other so many times and not come off the road, technically, not come out of the race at least, is just amazing. And that's what we always see here in Clio Cup. No matter what, there is always fantastic racing. It's always close. And nine times out of ten, all of the cars survive the battles. It's brilliant fun. But once again, as ever, Nicolas Milan finds himself at the front of the field. He's just one of those drivers, no matter what battles go on around him, he always manages to find himself right at the front of the pack. Now, he doesn't have to worry about championship points here this weekend because this isn't a round of Clio Cup Europe or Clio Cup France, which Nicolai is in this season. The drivers get a chance to do two of the groups each season. And this is a replay again. Look at that. So Torelli was sideways in the first place. Gelmini went way out wide. And then I think in getting on all of the marbles and all of the rubbish on the outside of the circuit, the back end then st stepped out on him and he managed to save it. This is Torelli going wide. He was on the inside for turn 16. And somehow, well, I think he was very lucky there, to be fair. Trevi didn't leave all of the room in the world for him to come back on. Gelmini goes wide again into turn 14. He gets a shove from Trevi, who gets a shove from Torelli. Into turn 15 they go. And now they're surely starting to think, what do we do about that guy at the front? The only Frenchman in this battle. Then again, I don't even think he'd consider himself part of this battle right now. He's doing an outstanding job, as ever, is Nicolas Milan. We're on to lap nine of this race. Nine and a half minutes and a lap still to go here at Mizano, so plenty more entertainment, not just for you, but for me as well. I absolutely love doing this. 
Still 78%, sorry, 72% humidity. The track is 48 degrees Celsius. And the air temperature is still over 25, so conditions are not getting any cooler. Here's a replay from further down the order. That's William Mazzetti over the kerbs. And, oh, that's Sandro Subek having a big old moment over the kerbs as well. These Clios absorb the kerbs really well, to be honest, but that will not have felt comfortable at all. I spoke to Sandro this morning, actually, and he said that he's really enjoying the car. It's very lively, but they drove the Clio 4 as well. This is the Clio 5. He drove the Clio 4 before this, and he said that this is even more fun than the Clio 4 was. And I think you'll agree, they look fantastic as well. They certainly sound good with their raspy little turbocharged engines. As I mentioned before, 200 horsepower coming from these cars, and they weigh barely a ton, and they have stick shift sequential gearboxes as well. So they're proper little tin top touring cars, these Clios. And they're very sturdy as well, really strong cars, so they can take a whack and you can still race them. I mean, you can see Giacomo Trebi's right-hand door completely dented in by the look of it. He's had a bit of friendly contact somewhere as well. Torelli completely sideways there as he comes out of 14, just clips the outside of the circuit. The back end gives up. Now, there's an incident involving cars 45 and 27 under investigation at turn four. Now, that is Cosentino and Paolo Felisa, who is actually stopped in sector one on the previous lap. So I'm not quite sure what's happened there, but whatever it is, it's under investigation. Quinto Stefano is ahead of Lorenzo Nicoli now. He's got up into eighth position overall, still leads the gentleman drivers, and he'll be really happy with that. There's Giacomo Trebi's number 116 car, car belonging to MC Motor Technica. They lined up fourth and fifth on the grid with his teammate Gian Alberto Coldani. He's currently running in sixth position just off the back of this train. You'll see him just come into shot there. And that's another remarkable thing, this, this battle that's going on at the front. It may be very intense with these guys. They're all trying to get one over on each other, but they still managed to pull away from the guys behind them. They're still moving forward in all of this. Another lockup from Milan and another lockup from Gelmini. They all still make the corner though, and that's the important thing. The gap is just over a second as you see it there, and there is the number 27 car of Francesco Cosentino coming into the pits. So clearly there's been some contact or some damage to both cars there, and they've had an issue. through turn 14. <laughs> Gabriel Torelli, the absolute showman, but that's going to help him get a run out of turn 14, actually. Sorry, it was turn 13 where he went wide. Swings it all the way out to the left, taking a very different line, actually, there to Giacomo Trebi. Gelmini is looking for his third win out of three in Clio Cup Italy. Now, this is what happened with Felisa. And the 27 machine, Felisa, down the inside of the brakes. Big hit into the right rear corner of Cosentino. Now, you could argue that Felisa went in late there, or Cosentino closed the door on him. That is going to take some looking at by the stewards. Now, here are multiple Clios. Wing mirrors dangling all over the curbs at the final corner. The two Progetto E20 Motorsport cars getting very close. You can see Quinto Stefano's car there with a very second-hand wing mirror just hanging off the tether. That was William Mazzetti having a big old scary moment through the last corner. Luckily, he didn't collect his teammate, Lorenzo Nicoli, on the way back onto the circuit. I'm sure we've all seen it happen before. This trio still sticking together, though, in the middle of the pack. They're not really doing much to challenge each other any harder than they did before. I think they're all following each other now that the tyre might have fallen away slightly. Just hoping to look after those tyres in the latter stages here. Now, here's some more shenanigans from further down the order. That's a car coming back on. As, oh, no, no, no. That's Joya getting turned sideways by the rejoining machine there. I think that might have been Due in the white car. Apologies to Due if it was not. 
didn't quite catch the number on that, but I'm sure we'll see some sort of investigation for that very, very soon. Now, Giacomo Trevi is glued to the back of Gelmini now. As, oh no, Lorenzo Nicoli. He had a really, really bad meeting here last year. And he's back into the pits now. So Lorenzo Nicoli's weekend looks like it's, uh, well, not quite over, but his first race is over at least. He's out of the car. And that means day done. We have one race a day in Clio Cup. So at least he can come back tomorrow. Hopefully the team can get the car fixed. This is great stuff, though, to watch. Look at this. Nicola Milan once again just streaking clear of everybody else. Well, these guys all fight amongst themselves. Now, this is the Clio Cup Italy podium right now as Torelli sends it down the inside into turn four on Trevi. Lovely move. That's what one of my favourite ever commentators, Charlie Cox, would call the Braille pass. Just slides it down the inside, gives him a bit of a wet and dry rub down the inside. And it was cars 60 and 53. It was Douay involved in the incident there with Joya. That incident is under investigation, as expected. As down the inside again, Trebi tries to get his own back on Torelli, gives him a bit of a shove through turn eight. That'll have felt absolutely awful inside Torelli's car. Back up the hill they go with Alcini coming after him. Whoa, that's a big moment. That's Joya. Now surely, maybe the tyre's gone down or something on the left rear there because Joya got hit in the left rear when Douay came back on. Has it affected the left rear of the car? Because that was a big old moment. That's a scary, scary place to have any sort of problem. Now, something's happened here with Trevi because he's dropped behind Torelli by quite a lot, and he's also dropped behind Alessandro Alcidi in the number 70 car. So somewhere, and I'm thinking somewhere might be turns 9 and 10, Trevi has lost time, and Alcidi, he's got a problem. The, bump, the bumper was hanging off the front of that car, actually. The, the front left didn't look too smart either. Not quite sure if he's got some damage as well from maybe a bit of contact, and that's why Trebi is where he is. Or was where he was, and now he's back in front. The battle reigns on between Gelmini and Torelli. Now we should get this lap and then one more. This is what happened to... LCD, the car just goes straight on, doesn't it? It's definitely had a hit on that front left corner. There's been no more fastest laps of the race put in, actually, since Giacomo Trebi did that 154.4 on lap two. The only other driver in the 54s at the moment is Nicola Milani. He did a 154.8 on that previous lap. These guys that you see on your screen here, Gelmini and Torelli, did 55.3s and 55.0s, respectively. So they'll be hoping to pick up the pace in these last couple of laps and try anything they can to catch Nicola Milan. Absolutely supreme as ever, that number one machine at the front. So Gelmini will get another 50 points if he finishes where he is now in Cleo Cup Italy. That'll mean he's on 158 points. Sorry, 150 points. Well, 42 points would go the way of Gabriel Torelli. Meaning that he would be on 120. So he'd be exactly 30 points behind. And we've red flagged the race. The red flag's just come out. We're going to have a look at why, but that was very sudden out of nowhere. So clearly there's been an incident somewhere. This is further down the order. This is Felisa. And then behind is, whoa, that is the 177 machine. And that's a big old hit into the wall, that is. That is Pietro Blumetti. And the car is stuck in the middle of the road. You can see just how dangerous these sausage curbs can be. Sometimes it just unsettles the car. He tries to save it, and that is a hefty whack into the barrier. I mentioned earlier that these cars are very, very tough. They can take a beating, but that is a very necessary reason for the red flag. At the end of the day, we would have gone under safety car at the least for that, and the race would have been finished behind the safety car, so they have red flagged it early, and there sits the remains of Plumetti's car. I hope he is OK. It's quite the car to have medical centre written on the side of it, isn't it, really? But that was an absolute belt into the wall, as we'd say in the UK. So Nicola Milan takes the race win overall, then. It doesn't mean anything for his championship, but as I mentioned, he's called it a holiday. It's a hell of a holiday to have, isn't it? Taking that. And there is Blumetti getting out of the car, understandably 
probably a bit shaken after that. I like his helmet design, I must say. But that was certainly a big old hit into the barrier, and it's good to see he's able to get out the car under his own steam and head back. But Nicola Milan wins overall. Gelmini finishes second and wins in Clio Cup Italy for the, for the third time out of three this season. Giacomo Trebi finishes third overall, second in Clio Cup Italy, and Gabriel Torelli gets another podium in his class. And we are treated to, once again, another very entertaining race. Here's another look at that. So you can see it just unsettles the car that tiny bit. The right-hand wheels both grab a load of grip from the outside of the circuit, but then it just wheel spins and spits the car left and into the barrier. There's a man we have on our screens quite a lot, Nicola Milan. It's quite interesting to see him without his usual guys around him, Mark Guillaume and David Pouget, his main rivals, Mark Guillaume, one of his teammates. Mark Guillaume, also a multiple champion in Clio Cup. He's won seven titles across France and Spain and Italy. And I don't think anybody quite knows how many wins Nicola Milan has in Clio's, but it's a lot. It is a lot. And that's another one to add to the list. And I'm sure he'll have been feeling the heat through that one from the guys behind, as everybody is here this weekend. Fantastic result for Gelmini, though. 150 points now, his tally for the weekend. With Giacomo Trebi finishing third overall. There is your result then. Torelli finishing fourth. Alessandro Alfidi finishing in fifth ahead of Gian Alberto Coldani. Cosimo Papi seventh ahead of William Mazzetti. Then we have Christian Ricciarini and Alessio Alcidi in 10th position. Behind them come Sandro Subek, Jacopo Jimenez, and then we have Damiano Pacchetti in car 43. A good recovery by Damiano, actually. Quinto Stefano falls down to 14th place by the end of the race there, but still wins the Gentleman Drivers' Cup, only just ahead of Douai and Cassara. Coutini finished 15th ahead of Douai and Cassara. Then it's Pasquale, 18th, 19th was Felisa. Blumetti is classified as 20th. Then we have Chiocca and Tonyon, Gioia, Nicoli and Constantino. The bottom three not finishing. Here's a quick look back then at how it all unfolded. A great start by Nicola Milan. Took him alongside Gabriel Torelli before they got to turn one. Torelli tried to hang it out around the outside, but just got the car slightly out of shape. And the very experienced Milan was able to make his way through. He didn't win the race without any pressure, though. Behind him, fantastic pressure from Gelmini. And Torelli kept the fight interesting at the front. They would soon be joined by Giacomo Trebi, who was also going to make it even more interesting. Big moment for Torelli and Gelmini. We know just how good these boys are at getting a Clio sideways. And Milan sneaks through, and from there, he would not look back. Scary moments even still for Gelmini. And even more scary moments for Gabriel Torelli, certainly finding where the track limits are here at Misano. A big, big hit in the background of the race for Felisa, getting into the side of Cosentino. Cosentino would go on to retire. Joya probably having the scariest moment of the entire race through turn 13, though. The car really, really breaking away. But, of course, the red flag moment coming from the number 177 car, just that tiny bit out of shape by Pietro Blumetti. And the race was red flagged instantly with good avoiding action there from the 64 car of Massimiliano Ciocca. It's always a shame to see a race red flagged, but that just shows you that even these cars, a front-wheel drive little tin-top car like this that you would expect to be absolutely on rails, they are very much on the limit around here. We saw a lot of drivers sideways, and I'm sure that the temperatures would have certainly made the tyres go off very, very quickly in these conditions. A lot of them have mentioned that the tyre is really, really good in cold conditions, and sometimes you've just got to be very careful with overheating it in the hot weather. It's still 26, 27 degrees here at the moment, and the track is around 49 degrees still, so... It's not friendly for the tyres at all. Good result for Giacomo Trebi. He wasn't in the top five of Clio Cup Italy coming into this race meeting, but finishing third means he'll get 36 points for his troubles. So he's going to be catapulted right into the mix with the likes of Gelmini and Torelli, who he was fighting with there. And I'm sure that will be... A big sigh of relief from him because 
you have to get on with it very, very quickly in these championships. This is the second race meeting for Clio Cup Italy after being at Imola a couple of weeks ago. Since then, we've been at Manicourt in France for Clio Cup France and Clio Cup Europe. But following on from this, later in the season, we head to Mugello in the middle of July with the ACI Sport guys. It's going to be a fantastic weekend, that is, in Mugello, where Clio Cup Italia and Clio Cup France will go up against one another. We also had Clio Cup Spain at Manicor, actually, when they supported GT World Challenge. But after this one, we go to Valencia in a week's time. And then another week later, we go to Zandvoort. And we have a little bit of a break before we go to the Hungaro ring at the start of July. That'll be the next time you'll hear me on the airwaves. And then I'll be back for Monza in October, near the end of the season. Another time where we'll see Clio Cup Italia after a bit of a break from being at the Red Bull ring. Six race meetings in all for Clio Cup Italia this season. And a lot of them involving three drivers. And speaking of three drivers, here they are coming on to the podium right now. Third place going the way of, well, that's Gelmini, isn't it? Or is it Gelmini? No, sorry, it's Giacomo Trebi. Apologies. I've got a small monitor in front of me that I couldn't quite see. That is Felice Gelmini. And of course, where's the hat backwards? He's a very cool character, is Felice. He's a real star. A lot of you will know him from TCR Europe, where he's very, very quick for Hyundai. But another top step of the podium for car one, P1, Nicola Milan. Nicola is an absolute star of Cleo Cup racing and a really humble guy as well. Great guy to speak to. And he remains one of the all time greats associated with this brand in motorsport. out all the action here for today in Clio Cup Europe but we will be back with you tomorrow at Clio Cup Italia second race is going to be at 20 past 2 local time tomorrow so I, Chas Draycott will see you then but for now enjoy the rest of your Saturday and we'll see you very soon